Good morning. I'm Rocky Donahue, the executive director of Pace Suburban Bus. We've been with Pace since its founding 38 years ago. Most of you know Pace is the transit provider for almost 300 municipalities in northeastern Illinois. And some of you may know us as the region's paratransit provider. Over my four decades in the industry, I have watched suburban transit evolve from a patchwork of different providers to a single agency moving 100,000 people a day. I've seen our fleet develop over time, service models change, and even laws passed that improve Illinoisans' access and mobility. When I first started in transit in the early 1980s, we were not talking about alternative fuels. We were trying to save an industry that was collapsing for the most of the preceding decade. But even then, before anyone at PACE had heard of climate change, we were actively engaged in emissions reductions and environmental stewardship. That's because every time we pick someone up, we are taking a car off the road. I'd like you to think about that for a moment. Every time somebody gets on a PACE bus, we are taking a car off the road. And every time we take a car off the road, we're reducing pollution. And we're also helping traffic move more smoothly, which further reduces idling and emissions. And I'm just not telling you this to tell you this. We have the data to back this up. The average household can reduce their carbon footprint by 10% just by giving up one of their cars. The average bus trip produces 33% fewer emissions per passenger mile than a comparable car trip. At rush hour, the savings increase to 82% with a full bus. And the statistics are even better when you travel by train. So the bottom line is transit is good for the environment. And this isn't complicated. It's good for the air we breathe and it's good for our climate. But I'll honestly tell you that's not enough. The fact is most of our buses are still burning diesel. It's not just us. Nationally, 84% of buses in the United States run on diesel. And while a diesel bus is a lot better than a dozen or two dozen cars on the road, it's still emitting fumes that contribute to health problems and our climate crisis. These problems aren't gonna get better on their own. I recently read Chicago was the 18th most polluted city in the country. And as our summers get hotter, heat waves will intensify our pollution. Much of this pollution is concentrated along highways, busy roads, and industrial areas. The people who live and work in those areas tend to be economically challenged and tend to be facing a whole host of other challenges. The report from the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change paints an even more bleak picture. The fuels we are burning are going to continue to warm our planet to extreme levels. This will affect our region's water system, food supply, public health, and physical environment. It's up to all of us to reverse it. As a public agency, I believe we all have a duty to set an example that the rest of society can follow. It is the public sector's duty to lead the way by investing in clean energy technology. At PACE, we began to take this responsibility seriously more than a decade ago. We partnered with the city of Highland Park to operate efficient hybrid buses. We deployed a fleet of over 100 buses serving Cook County South suburbs that run on cleaner, compressed natural gas. We're currently building a garage in Cook County's northwest suburbs that will house a second fleet of CNG buses. We've also been experimenting with ways to make our service more efficient. More efficient service wastes less energy and burns less carbon while still moving the same number of people. This is exactly what our Pace on Demand program does. Our ride share and van pool programs help match up people who live and work near each other so they can carpool instead of drive individually. This has been popular and effective. 
even in places where there isn't enough demand for a bus route. Our transit supportive development guidelines helps businesses and more importantly, communities design their communities to be more conducive to transit and other sustainable transportation. PACE's board is about to officially adopt our new strategic vision plan, driving innovation. The top priority laid out in this document is to investigate and plan for battery electric buses. Our goal is to have our entire fleet of vehicles be zero emission by 2040. The plan also calls to have a study on our facilities. That, that plan will take a look into what it will actually take to build the infrastructure needed in our garages and around our service area to support our vehicles. It calls for working with the RTA, our sister agency, CTA and Metra, as well as IDOT, the Tollway, CMAP, and other local, state, and federal agencies to help us implement this technology region-wide. Currently, electric buses have 70% lower emissions than diesel buses. Eliminating vehicle emissions will have a truly massive impact on pollution, public health, in our climate. If I could wave a wand and electrify her hopefully tomorrow, I would. Unfortunately, we are still working through a number of obstacles. I imagine many of the people listening to this conferences are also dealing with similar challenges. One of those challenges is cost. The price of this technology is becoming a little bit cheaper and the savings on fuel over a vehicle's lifetime are real. But acquiring the vehicles is expensive, especially if you operate 800 vehicles like we do and need to run service continually during the transition. Building the capacity to charge the vehicles is expensive also. Training employees is another upfront cost. You have to remember, we're a public agency operating on a budget supported by the taxpayers and taxes. Another challenge is infrastructure. Beyond the cost of the infrastructure, the charging stations, the garages, there are logistical implications. We serve six counties, an area approximately the size of the state of Connecticut. We have one of the largest service areas in the entire country for a transit system. Many of our vehicles are out on the road for hours, sometimes for most of the day. Many will travel hundreds of miles before they return. Some of our service operates 24 hours, seven days a week. And when our vehicles are in the garage, they need to be serviced and maintained. So we have to figure out when do we charge the batteries? Where do we do it? For some of our routes, the buses will simply not be able to be charged at the garage. This means partnering with communities to install charging infrastructure around our metropolitan area. I'm sure we'll have many willing partners, but figuring out the details will not be easy. Another challenge is time. Because of these itch issues, Electrification is going to take some time. COVID has played a role in parts shortages, not being able to get equipment, the supply chain. And there's actually a concern that some delays may be in actually acquiring vehicles. I have not heard of it yet in buses, but I know it's tough right now to get vehicles because of computer chips that, that are just not available. And our buses are also intelligent vehicles as well. So that supply chain shortage is a concern. But in the meantime, older buses will still need to be replaced. And often these buses need to be replaced before a garage is ready for electric vehicles. So how do we replace our buses yet keep our service running reliably, and yet convert to a zero emission fleet. Well, we're gonna be using CNG 
to help us bridge the gap. Another concern right now is ridership. There's no way to sugarcoat this. COVID-19 decimated our ridership. While Pace was able to hold on to a bigger share of its riders than some of our peers, we're only carrying about half of the people we moved two years ago. And even then, ridership is down compared to where it was about 10 years ago. To really make an impact on air quality, our buses should be full of people, electric or not. We need to get people out of their cars and into transit. And another concern, our power plant's fuel sources. Chicagoland needs to generate more of its electricity from renewable sources. While it's true that charging a bus with coal-powered electricity is better than running an internal combustion engine, we're past the point where we can afford to run dirty power plants. These challenges are all surmountable. A few decades ago, when I was starting out at PACE, the technology to run a zero emissions fleet just wasn't there. We've come leaps and bounds since then. All we need now is a shared commitment to this transition, not just PACE, not just transit, but among our taxpayers, among our elected officials, among our suppliers, and among our society as a whole. I think that consensus is emerging, but we still have a ways to go. We've had many local officials come to us eager to help us electrify. We've had dozens of citizens write to us and even attend board meetings to remind us just how important this is. In the three years we spent drafting our strategic plan, many stakeholders brought up these issues to us. The governor is calling for drastic action around clean energy. And as of early September, when I'm recording this, the state legislature seems to be on the cusp of passing a clean energy bill. The General Assembly has already trusted us with a massive investment as part of Rebuild Illinois to modernize our facilities. We're partnering with IDOT on electric pair transit vehicles and our 2022 budget will contain a sizable investment for an electric fixed route vehicle program. We will begin purchasing electric buses as well as the supporting facility infrastructure. The federal government has pushed for electrification in many of their recent proposals. Our representatives in Washington have met with PACE specifically and offered their help. And I spoke with the Biden administration's top transportation official Secretary Buttigieg, about electrifying the PACE system when he came to Chicago just a few weeks ago to talk to transit officials. I hope everyone attending this conference can do their part to keep the ball rolling. This is not something PACE or anyone can accomplish alone. Please reach out to me, to your representatives at all level of government, and to your communities to see what role you can play in building clean cities in Northeastern Illinois. I thank you for your time today. I look forward to answering your questions and I hope we continue to have this very important conversation.